I want to stick to the trans conversation for just a moment. I already know where you're going. Because we need to talk about one in particular that really. (laughs) I'm ready to go. Hi. (laughs) Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) Lamar Um, Odom and Caitlyn Jenner team up to launch a new sports podcast. That bitch look like old jewelry. <laughs> Put that picture back up there. That bitch look like old jewelry. <laughs> Baby, that's like that's that like Catherine Chancellor jewelry. Girl, that's she's like old you old diamonds. Son. Yeah, I ain't even gonna front. The bitch look like old diamonds. Mm-hmm. Old Cubans are corny though, because you know diamonds are real. That's definitely Cubans. Are yes, indeed. <laughs> that's, Cz's. That's imitation diamonds. Okay, but girl. Let's talk about it. When I tell you, I know those Kardashian women are over there pissed. Because she going to end up with the dick down her throat by the end of the motherfucking weekend <laughs> if it ain't already happened. <laughs> right. Well, let's talk about it. All right. Well, the streets have said they should call that podcast Balls on the Court. They should. Because <laughs> it's definitely nuts on sluts over there. <laughs> Both of them is the sluts of the family. But let's talk about it very quickly. Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. Because Caitlyn is also in the news for this. Did you get the other one, the yes, other article? I do have it right here. Caitlyn Jenner is once again speak, spreading anti-LBGTQIA rhetoric. Caitlyn Jenner has publicly supported a ban on transgender female athletes in Newark. New York County. New York County, stating that all I'm trying to do is protect women. Nigga, it's either you're in sports or you're not. Now, how you over here want to ban the, the trans girls from being in sports, but yet you got a sports podcast? And, and was named by ESPN Woman of the Year. Woman of the Year. How? I don't know. Woman of the Year. Let's talk. Let's let's really dissect this. If you really want to motherfucker talk about a bitch. So you done came through here, white hole, and you done gathered up all of your accolades. You truly have walked on the backs of white women, Mm -hmm. came and gathered up all the accolades as a trans woman, and now you want to dictate who and who can't play basketball wherever. You don't feel like they should be playing basketball, softball, soccer, swimming, or whatever. But yet you did the things, and you got ESPN, that is this. What it, Mo? Can you get? Can you tell me what ESPN means? Ask Alexa. Yes. ESPN is uh, uh, no, actually I don't. You can't. Uh, okay. I, I, I said ask Alexa. Alexa, actually, I can't. What does ESPN mean? Oh, this bitch cut off on me. I don't give a fuck. It's sports, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. All I know is sports. That's all. <laughs> you mean to tell me that ESPN, the sports place, mm-hmm. named you woman? Ah. Uh, uh, entertainment and sports programming network. The yeah. entertainment and sports network programming network. programming network named you nigga woman of the year. Now once you done went to gather all your trophies and all your things <laughs> we don't want no more of your trainers in here. Mm-hmm. And when she was, did it was she also in an altercation with a, a vehicle accident? When she killed those people in that car? Yeah. And then she got her TV show? Yeah. That's how that works. <laughs> so you mean to tell me, I want to delay my game. ESPN Sports. <laughs> Name your nigga ass Woman of the Year. And now, because I'm not mad at your views. I'm just mad that you occupied those spaces and you came in there and snatched up all that shit. When mm-hmm. why, why they didn't give it to Serena? Serena. <clears throat> okay. Venus. Somebody more deserving. Why didn't they give it to Maria Navataroya, the first dyke? Why they didn't do all the things? And you come in. After you have had your nuts clipped, 
No, and we, get, don't, no, we don't know if she did. That bitch still had her nuts clipped. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, guess what that bitch looked like in her in a dress. <laughs> bitch, you done went down here and you have a blank space. Looking like a Barbie. In your panties. Looking like a plastic Barbie doll. <laughs> All I'm trying to be, no matter which way you turn it, <laughs> you have a blank space in your panty. Tweets your legs. <laughs> oh, God. You are a Malibu Barbie. <laughs> I think that's where that accident happened. It was down there on the PCA. In Malibu. Right. Pacific Coast Highway. You have become a Malibu Barbie. Oh. The went in. Gather up all the things that you can gather, and now hmm. nobody else can't do it. Now here's how I feel. I just told y'all. I was just gonna say, to be fair. To be fair, I just told y'all last week before we left. Mm -hmm. I feel like that the trans people can have a league of their own, mm -hmm. a trans basketball league, a trans football league, a trans baseball league, mm -hmm. a trans. Tennis, whatever the fuck y'all want to do out there in the sports. I don't want to do none of it. I like to watch nuts go up down mm -hmm. the field. I like to watch real niggas run down the field. We're going to have mm -hmm. to watch some real sports together, Maddie. We can. On so Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> don't be shy when I know one or two. <laughs> of the players. Right. <laughs> in all genres. But... <laughs> Now that's the conversation they don't want to hear. But at all. <laughs> but uh, I'm okay with that transpire. I'm okay with that happening. Mm -hmm. Because people are not in a space yet of understanding that if you're on hormone therapy for a long period of time, right? Like jazz, like my like my mm -hmm. niece jazz. Mm -hmm. Jazz ain't got jazz. There are some women. That would motherfucker. This is why we go into the conversation we had last week. That will talk a truck jazz, will slam jazz on her neck, whoop jazz ass in UFC fighting. Mm -hmm. There are women that are physically bigger, stronger, and more solid than jazz who was born male that is now, that is trans and has had the full operation surgery. That if she decided that she wanted to become a UFC fighter, that them bitches will stomp that whole neck loose. So we well, had so a conversation on the phone last <laughs> week. Uh, we were talking on the phone last week and we were saying we want to talk about this. This is where we were talking about transitioning. When is it too soon? The benefits of transitioning Wait a minute. Wait, wait, Craig. I got to cut you off right what here. Happened? We going to do it. Sarita said, but, but Caitlin only played against bio men. Then if that's the case, she had no business being woman of the year. Correct. She, that, sh she should have been man of the year in her dress. That's the point that we're That's making. the point that I'm making. If she can, if she played against bio men, great. Mm -hmm. But then she should never have walked away. We were all hot about this bitch walking away with man, woman of the year. All of us. Mm -hmm. what, what was what was, uh, what was Caitlyn's name before? Bruce. Bruce, yeah. Bruce. <clears throat> it was Bruce that went against those, those Correct. players. Not, mm -hmm. not Caitlyn. Right. So that's the difference. So what we were saying on the phone yeah. last week was... The benefit of like a jazz of transitioning early, because I don't know how old she was when she transitioned, but she was young. Uh -huh. Seven. Okay, so Madison's point is she's not like a biological male because she transitioned at, at, at seven. She had already started doing the HRT and all that stuff. So in that instance, that's kind of like an exception. Maybe a trans person who started transitioning at seven could play in sports with bio women because tip, they're kind of the same because they transitioned early. But then Madison was saying, I didn't transition until later and there are things that I have to do now because I didn't transition earlier, transition sooner. And so that was a whole nother conversation, but it becomes so... Yes, Cindy, you can share it. Yes, please. What's that? She said, is it okay if, I sh if she shares my live? But it becomes so... Um, it, it becomes sticky because there's so many different circumstances, right? Um, I told you, Craig, when we had this conversation on the telephone, you asked me, T.S. Madison, how do you feel about transitioning, people transitioning their kids and transitioning early? Mm -hmm. I, I said, these are my thoughts. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm in a conundrum. Yeah. 
because one, I've already lived the experience of being a teenage boy. That's the yeah. last time I was, was. I lived. I lived all the way up to a teenage boy. What were you? Sixteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. That was it. Yeah. After being a teenage boy, that was it. Yeah. I understood where I wanted to go in my life. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. However, had I had the opportunity to transition early with me knowing where I am now mm -hmm. and where I am in my life now, I would have loved to have been able to do that so that I could have stopped some of this hair, this hair growth on my back and titties and mm -hmm. shit that I got to go to laser for now. Had, had I, had early transition early all of that would have stopped it would have been it would have nipped it in its bud mm -hmm. so i'm in a i'm this is where i'm, I'm on a seesaw with it. i can't give you if i was asked this question you know on a public platform you're not gonna the exact answer you would get is i lived i had the opportunity to live it to a teenage boy yeah and understand that okay that's it and so when people think <sighs> I need you to give me some energy. Uh huh. When people think that they're reading me by saying certain things, I'm like, I have embraced. That's why when they say Madison, you you fight for the LGBTQIA community and you fight for gay men too. I'm like, because mm -hmm. I had the opportunity of being of be, of of, yeah. of living of having that lived experience yes. of being a gay man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I always was a woman. Though. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what we said on that call was sometimes if a we it, it's not cut and dry it's not black and white because what if a person did transition or start transitioning at seven and then they want to detransition at 25 because we've talked we were talking we're not going to talk about it here but we talked on the phone about trans people that we know that have regrets yes but and want to go back but here's where we have to get into and stand on Craig, that mm -hmm. we're not a monolith. Exactly. And, every situation and, is different. And everybody has to have an individual life journey. Mm -hmm. And you have to go on that journey because I, re I, I respect the fact that I learned so much as a teenage boy. Yeah. If I had the opportunity to do it all over again, I'd do it with some hormones earlier. Right. Right. But, but I'd still go through me being a teenage boy. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that I could know, like, mm -hmm. I don't want, mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But you also are, are clear that, like you said on the phone that day, you said, this is how I'm going out of here. Yeah. But then what about the trans person or, or the person who thinks they're trans at 15 or 13, they're underage, and let's just say their parents allow them to start the process. And then they turn 23 and they realize, oh, bitch, this is a mistake. You know what I mean? Well, what do we do? I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's all such an individual case. Like it's uh, to your point, your your community is not a monolith. Black gay men, that's not a monolith. Black people, we're not a monolith, even though we're the same in terms of you know how we appear and how we show up in some of our experiences. But the way that we think, the way that we move, it's not going to be identical. It's not. But we also had this conversation too. Now we now we're sharing a, our private conversation. Right. I don't give a fuck because this is how I feel. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. I'm not invalidating nobody else's identity. Exactly. I'm only speaking about my identity. Exactly. Right. And, the, and the things that I've experienced on this journey. Mm -hmm. Now, Craig, we talked about Joanne the scammer. Yes. And you you gave me an example. I didn't know this about yeah. Joanne. You told me that you watched a video where Joanne the scammer said that at one point that he was going to, he was really, he was around. He was around trans people. It's a podcast that Jen and my, I can't remember the name of her podcast. Was it so popular? Because I was on that show, so popular. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but you guys know the show that we were promoting my telling our stories in Paris. I talk about it in one of the episodes, but Jen, uh, Joanne the scammer was going to transition because the, 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 the queer people that were ushering him into the community were trans, were mostly trans people. So he was influenced by that. Mm -hmm. And he thought that he was trans because of his, his, of his surrounding, his environment. Mm -hmm. And so he was going to transition. His mom said, you really need to think about this. Are you sure this is what you want to do? Well, his mom ended up moving the family someplace else. And so his, his, his surroundings were no longer trans people. And then he had this revelation that, okay, I am in fact not trans. I'm just a gay boy. 
And so he didn't do it. And he said on this podcast with Janet Mock, I'm glad that I didn't, I, I took the time and didn't, it didn't happen. But that's a perfect example. Yes, that is, but that is his example. That's his example. You understand what I'm saying? And like, but what, which tells me that even, even with him telling that story, that he's impressionable. There are people that are impressionable. And that's what happens when you're young, though, too. It can happen. You're, you're older. impressionable when it can, you're young. It, it can also happen when you're older, too. Because I, because I see older people out here running down there to get BBLs and get teeth and get all this type of stuff. They had no motherfucking bit, had no thoughts about having any of these but things. But they were influenced by social they media. They were influenced by social media. Mm -hmm. So you have to have to say that you could be impressionable at any age that, in you your can. life. You absolutely can. Because I have friends that have gone to get teeth. Toro, toro, toro. And, they didn't necessarily, and, they didn't necessarily go to, and they didn't necessarily go to a reputable dentist. And so I'm just like, well, why did you want to do Or they went and got a BBL. And I'm like, well, how much of that was your idea? And how much of it was influenced by what you saw on social media? You know what I mean? And, and again, it goes back to what I said a few weeks ago, whenever it was, when I was talking about when there's something that's going on in the zeitgeist, some people don't have their own idea about whatever that topic is. They just look at the comments and figure out what everybody else is saying, and, and then they jump on board with what everybody else is saying. Kind of the same way they ring it, that some of these hoes trying to ring my house up. Like, I don't want my house to look like, I don't want mm -hmm. be beige walls or gray walls. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. I like crown molding. I like colors. I like taking pieces. Like, I don't think that, and somebody's like, well, you need to hire an interior decorator to come. Bitch, my house is laid <laughs> to the from the front door to the back. Mm -hmm. And it's because of what I see in my home, because I have to live here. I, they don't have to live there, and that's the, that's a lot of situations mm -hmm. with people. You have to live in your body, right? Y'all decorating y'all bodies and y'all self for other motherfucking people when you have to live there. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You gotta live there. You gotta clean that every day. You have to do that. You get what I'm saying? Some of y'all and some of you niggas out there mm -hmm. putting on this facade and this imagery for people. Yes, indeed. Who in their quiet time and in their past time are doing some of the most unthinkable things. Excuse me. And um, thank you, Paige. And I love Kay Michelle. This is not a read to Kay Michelle, but like she finally admitted on that show that she has, I think it's on Lifetime. Mm -hmm. Can't remember. Is it on Lifetime? Lifetime, yes. Where she talks about the surgeries and stuff that she had. And she finally admitted that she did it because she thought it would be be able to keep a man. You know, she was putting herself at risk. You know what I mean? Her health. You know, she had all these side effects, but she just kept But this kept... is what's going on with, with lots of women. Yeah. And they're seeing that these men are going after the whore look. But when they, but when it's all said and done, they always end up with the housewife. Jasmine, Be uh, Jasmine Sullivan said it best: "A girl like me, they always the hoes are always winning. <laughs> it seems like it. Anyway. Seems like it because they getting beat up, getting their pussy beat in, mm -hmm. and becoming single mothers. But when those whores go to looking around and be like, well, why he with that fat bitch, or why he with that tie, why he with that? It's because bitch, you the thing to chase." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you done snatched and grabbed, and you see that BBL, these BBLs killing y'all. Ooh, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. And somebody said in the comments, they're not paying attention to what the maintenance is on the teeth or the BBL or whatever it is that you're That's getting true. done. You know what I'm saying? That's like true. you going out here getting these big ass teeth. You welcome, Diana Perez. Thank you for loving the perfume. Thank you. Y'all yeah. get you some, get you some. Um, but Craig, I told you when we were in the, when I was in the car the other day. I said, "Bitch, mm -hmm. I'm going when I meet the Lord in mm -hmm. my spirit form, and I look back at that body." Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And this is why I ain't cut my dick off. Mm -hmm. This is why I ain't, I haven't had an SRS because I'm I'm at one with all of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, and and I was pre there were times that people were trying to pressure me into having an SRS. 
Well, you ain't you ain't no real motherfucking bitch until you go out there and get your mother till you get a pussy. And that's what y'all be trying to pressure me into doing. Oh, what like people that you were working with? And or? people that a lot of not y'all, not the Maddie Mob, but a lot of me. Well, un, well, until until he get his dick cut off, he gonna always be a him to me. Well, then I well I guess that's what it is. Cause bitch, I'm a she, I'm she, her, and hers. That was the name of the podcast. Oh, never before. It, Janet Mock's podcast was called Never Before. Oh. Thanks, Kayla, for saying that. Thank you, that. Kayla. Yeah, that's the episode. Hey, bitch, it's she, her, and hers with me. I don't mm -hmm. even have to communicate with you. But there, there are times that I see people saying, well, you ain't no real one until you... I know the real ones got they motherfucking... No, bitch, you... you if real is what you feel, feelings aren't real. Put your money down, place your bet, and spin the wheel. If real is what you feel, you know the realness. Girl, you are old fag. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as old as you. Mm -hmm. But I, <laughs> I'm right behind Mo. But but you know, when you said that, it reminds me of that episode of um, Pose when I can't remember the character's name, but when she went and had um, the Electra. Electra. When mm -hmm. she went and had the surgery. And the guy that had her set up in that apartment and was taking care of her, he told her, I, "If you get rid of that, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do this anymore." And she went and had it done, and he was done. He was finished with her. But you have to anything that you do to yourself, you have to do that for you, you. and you yes. have to be at one doing that for you. Like that's gonna make you whole. If because Craig, I'm complete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I may get a little, little, little nip, little snip, you know, for for the aging process. You've had one before since I've, I've known you. I've had a, well, not since you've known. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've had a little something since I've known you. I've had to think about that because <laughs> I've known you for a long time. <laughs> so I had to think about that. Well, if you have, it's been very subtle. And that's all I'm gonna do is subtle things to keep me in the in the in, mm -hmm. the, in the age bracket of like I like when I'm 50, I still want to give 35. When I'm 60, I still want to give 35. Well, when I want to get when I get 35, I just want to put a little a little little. Oh, just, when you get 35. Well, when I want to look 35, I just put a little just for me down just here. Just for me. Okay. That sea moss and stuff I be using in that in that skincare. Like you works. mo with your hair done, you do look like you, look, <laughs> you 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 look like you in your late late. Late twenties. Don't do that. Late, like thirty-one. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and not a day younger. <laughs> like thirty-one. You know, no, you're late, late twenties. No, I'm thinking more like twenty-five. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no, no. We're not gonna do that. Right. What do you mean, not gonna do no. what? Uh, yeah. Except your grace. <laughs> right. right. Now, now we're, we're giving you a little leeway. <laughs> <laughs> not too much. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> not too much. Except your grace. We've but, given. We giving you grace in this conversation. Oh, let's be real. I do look younger. Than no, I we are being real. We are. You look like you're in your late, 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 late twenties, like thirty one, maybe thirty two. But she's very handsome, though. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> when the Lord meet me at the gate to mm -hmm. send me wherever I'm going, whether it's in or out, mm -hmm. and that man, he be standing there and saying next, and I get there and he's like name. I'm like, well, honey, you don't know my name. <laughs> And I said, hold on, let me pull these panties down. And that dick hit that cloud. He gonna say, oh, shit, Tim. <laughs> I didn't recognize you. Miss Tim, I almost didn't recognize you. Girl, he gonna know who you are. He gonna say, I gave you. Now, Miss Tim, I gave you that. And I'm gonna say, God, I took it right on with me. Thank you for it. He, he gonna know who you are. <laughs> Thank you for it. <laughs> Oh. Thank you, God, for all that you have gave it unto me. Thank Hallelujah. you, God. Hallelujah. Yes, when Lord. I think of the Lord and oh. all the things he has done for me, Amen. I begin to pray and shout. Hey, Yababa Shata, and worship oh. him. Hey. Amen. Skin potions, I see y'all down there in the comments. We did receive our box. Mo is over there looking like a, like a throwaway. <laughs> Don't do that. Because he did see my box and he was like, Well, anything come for me? I still gotta go. Oh, skin po I still gotta go to my P.O. box skin potion. <laughs> skin potions, we did receive your things. And I did receive my cookie butter. Now, let me tell you something. As a big girl. Uh-huh. As a big ooh, see, I like all these roots and things in here. It's somebody when I see some roots and things in there, I know it's it's gifted from the earth. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's come from the earth. I know what that means. No, you don't know what it means. <laughs> it means it comes from the earth. 
He makes me hit one with the ancestors. We are one. But see, I like this cookie butter. See, I'm a, it, I, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to get into my mating season. Oh. And when I get into my mating season, I like to put cookie butter in between my thighs. Because you see how it's... Girl, put some on these knees. Don't... <laughs> <laughs> I got pads for that. <laughs> girl, I thought you were working today, girl, the way, the way these knees look. It's all right, baby. I got pads for that. <laughs> I have knee pads. Ah! Girl, I thought you were working this er this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Not too much. But you see, I'm getting ready to go into my mating season. And, you know, it's just something about me being a heavier girl uh -huh. that I like the fact that when a man, especially a man from Africa or African descent, mm -hmm. gets on top of me. <laughs> And he smells all that good cookie butter. Oh, I thought you were about to say ravishes you. And then he's gonna ravish me. Because it's gonna be eating like a it's gonna be eating a chocolate cake. It's gonna be eating like a chocolate, a caramel chocolate cake. <laughs> you don't it smell good? It does right? smell good. And I mix it with my everything. Uh-huh. I do this. He's trapped forever. <laughs> he, oh, so he, He's caught in the great reaping. Oh, mm. so that's how you work. That's how your spells work. You have captivated me <laughs> in every way. From the time we met. What you know about that teacher Moses? To the day we met you, boy, you got me caught, caught up. <laughs> what y'all know about that motherfucking teacher Moses? <laughs> with you. I love that lady. Let me tell you something. I love teacher Moses with everything in me. And I love teacher Moses because I, I was introduced to teacher Moses. Thank you, Skin Potion. Miss Mary got hers, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I was introduced to Tedra Moses through um, Miss E. Oh, really? I, I almost just about to cry for a second uh -huh. because I remember me when I first moved here to Atlanta. Yeah, and uh, she had that black Lexus G three hundred bitch. It was a nineteen ninety nine. Uh huh. Black Lexus. You met Miss E when you got to Atlanta, or before you got here? I met her before I moved. Here. Okay. And we were riding around in that black Lexus nineteen ninety nine G three hundred bitch. Mm -hmm. And she was playing that teacher was. I was like, oh my god, who is this? You know, and I, I fell in love with it. And that's yeah. also during the time when um, Noah's Ark was out. Uh huh. Because they put a lot of her stuff in on the yeah. uh, show. Oh. As well. oh, 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 I. Wait, how how it go? Uh, oh. dun, 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 dun. Thank, Thank you. you. You don't understand my, my gangster. gangster. Yeah. yeah, it's just like it's just it's and and I, and I think that I that, rolled out to that album like I rolled that that album. shit. But but wait, so th for those who may not know who Teacher Moses is, the first single was um. Da -na 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 -na. Don't, don't mean to disrespect you. Parts of your own my world. I, da -da 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 -da. I swear. Visions of you and I. Yeah, yeah. I just, just want to be, be your just girl. Wanna be, just want to be just your girl. Yeah. yeah. Just want to be your girl. Yeah. And so, like, we would ride out to that. And she was like, and Miss E was like, oh, bitch, you don't, you don't know nothing about Teacher Moses. Baby. And I didn't. Yeah, yeah. And so, because, you know. Teacher was the girl. That it's a special place. He will come in. Yes. Rescue me. Yes. I know someday he'll come for yes. me. Y'all better go get that first album. And that Take Me with her and Raphael Sadiq. Take, Take me back to the day when you made me fall. So in love. Hey. Y'all oh better go God. get that Complex Simplicity. Complex the first album is called Complex, complex Simplicity. Simplicity. And, Moses. and like we follow each other on Instagram. And I've written her and told her that how much I loved her. But I haven't mm -hmm. really had the opportunity to sit with her and hold her mm -hmm. hand and express to her how important that she is yeah. because I've lost somebody that introduced me to her and like these yeah. were these were moments that we shared like and yeah. it's so crazy the way that music can take you it transport you I it's, mean yeah. it's a time music I is mean, a time capsule it is you can remember where you were who you were with what you had on bitch even if you have amnesia <laughs> right. and or, what Amnesia. <laughs> that means your knees can't remember nothing. Okay. Amnesia. Yeah, that's my album. Excuse me. I'm trying to see what's a candy bar out there. Your sugar mm. Yeah, my sugar got low. <laughs> it says milk. Mr. Beast Feastables. I think this is vegan. No, it's not. 
Oh. I watched a lady online the other day. She made some uh, star crunches. Mm -hmm. How they taste? Mm, I watched her mouth. Let me look at the ingredients. Mm. Mm. Don't you hate when people do like that when they? I do it. You do that? Mm. Oh no, this got egg and milk in it. Girl, get closer to the mic. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> oh my God. What do you want a piece? I'll take it. It's I'll good. I'll take it. These people sent it to me from this company. I had to take it Girl, he tried to take half the candy bar. Yeah, this is new. Ain't gonna go out there and tell my teeth. I you? took a bar. Yeah, she may have gave me some chocolate. Oh. <laughs> See how it came out of package? Oh, that's a nice package. It came from Feastables. I'm gonna do a day of unboxing. I got so much stuff, but. From last year. You mean to tell me you're gonna tell every piece, piece of my business? <laughs> You gonna tell everything? You mean got some more than bitches? That's why you a fag now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, look how nice it came in the packer. Say, Who are these people? They sent this to me. Oh, Mr. Beast. Oh, he's really popular for uh on TikTok. Yeah. They does. sent me this, Mr. Beast. Yeah. Let me see. Hmm? Let this. They sent me this. Thank you, Mr. Beast. Yeah, he does a lot of um, charity work, too. Well, he damn sure did just not giving me this candy. <laughs> mm. Mm. I feel like Shirley Caesar right now with these old glasses at the, at the tip of my nose. Girl, you need a fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> and a nice dry wig. Grab that one over there. <laughs> No, Craig, you was doing an impression earlier. <laughs> I'm not putting that wig on. No, you got to. That was on Instagram. <laughs> it's okay, you got. Mm mm. We. Oh, mm mm. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put that over there. Don't take it home with you either. Can I get a bar? Uh, it was good. It was so good. You can. How many bars are in there? That took. Oh, yeah, go ahead. She, <laughs> she don't need all that chocolate. I've told you I've always been good to you people. What do you mean? So, can you stop saying you people? Miss Mary calling. Ain't him. you black? <laughs> I'm coming, Miss Mary. Mm. You said what? You got a big ass. We're going to talk about you behind your back. We're going to tell you in your face. <laughs> it's my pants. That's why. No, it ain't your pants. <laughs> 